What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a look at the new Xbox One S. So this is S for slim because this is 40% smaller than the Xbox One that debuted a few years ago. It also adds Ultra HD Blu-ray and 4K video streaming while also eliminating the external power supply. So getting to the box, the packaging is fairly minimal here with a hint of that iconic Xbox green color at the bottom edge. Now this is the two terabyte launch day version, which I picked up for $399 on Amazon, but a cheaper 500 gig version will be available later for $2.99. Along the side, you'll see what's included in the box, and on the back, we'll actually find some artwork highlighting some of the famous Xbox franchises, including Forza, my personal favorite right now. So slicing the tabs at the top of the box, we can go ahead and pop open the lid. And the first thing we'll see here is a bright green Xbox setup pamphlet. It's fairly basic, but does explain how to install the included vertical stand, which we'll show you how to do a bit later. So getting to the accessories first, let's start with the flat box containing the paperwork and the vertical stand. Now the stand is black plastic to match the underside of the Xbox and on the underside of the stand, you'll see a quick pictorial which explains how to install it in addition to our Xbox branding. And of course, we do have rubber feet as well to keep it stabilized. The paperwork is very simple here, just a regulatory and warranty guide as well as a pamphlet promoting the Elite controller and the code you can redeem for a 14 day free trial period for Xbox Live. Next up, we have a long skinny box for the accessories. First up, we have a high speed HDMI cable which can handle 4K. And we'll one of the most welcome changes here is the elimination of the external power supply. So all we get now is a simple, standard, universal power cord. We also get a single Xbox One S controller, which adds Bluetooth for the first time, which doubles the range to 40 feet and can connect with other devices, such as your PC. The controller has also been tweaked in a few areas, such as adding a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, so you can use your own headphones while also retaining the proprietary connector for existing accessories. The front of the controller has also been tweaked with a new more flush design while most of the buttons and joysticks are largely the same with some tweaked graphics. The shoulder buttons get the most attention here with a thinner design and improved switches that generally feel a little more solid and responsive. They've also added a texture to the surfaces on the back of the controller so it's much easier to grip. Once again, we have a removable cover for the AA battery compartment and they do include a set of Duracells. The power button is mostly the same and it still lights up in white. And last but not least, let's go and slide the console out of the box, which is padded on either side with these foam blocks. Of course, it's also wrapped in lots of styrofoam plastic. Once we peel this off, we can take a close look around at the hardware. Now, for the most part, I really like this new design. It's much more simplified with fewer parts and finishes and just looks a lot more contemporary with a more unified design throughout. This is probably the version they should have launched initially instead of looking like a 1980s VCR. Gone are the glossy plastic and louvered vents, and instead we have the circular perforations for ventilation. The casing is essentially one big intake vent for the large circular ventilator toward the top, which exhausts everything that comes in through the sides. Now, all this ventilation keeps the system very cool, even with the built-in power supply, so the fan never really spools up. So getting around to the backside of the Xbox One S, things have been cleaned up considerably back here. The ports are more neatly arranged, and you can see that the power port has been redesigned for the internal power supply. They've also cut out the Kinect sensor. So if you want to use your existing Kinect, you'll actually have to use the USB port, and they do sell an adapter for that, which itself has to be powered. So you add quite a few wires to that setup. Otherwise, the rest of the ports are pretty familiar. We have two HDMI, one for in, one for out. We have two USB. We have an infrared output for an infrared red blaster accessory. We do have optical audio output in addition to an ethernet jack. We also get a Kensington lock once again, so if you want to secure your Xbox so it doesn't walk away, uh, you have that accessory available. We'll also find a tamper evidence seal, so if you crack into your Xbox, you might lose your warranty coverage. On the front side, we now have physical buttons for power and eject instead of the finicky capacitive buttons from the previous generation. The third USB port has also been relocated from the side to the front, which makes it far more convenient to use, especially in a tight entertainment cabinet. Another new feature is an integrated IR blaster on the front, which is designed to replace your remote controller so you can control your home theater from within the Xbox experience. Incidentally, on the bottom side of the Xbox, we'll find our model number and a little greeting from Seattle, where the Xbox team is based. Now, getting to that vertical stand it only works on one side of the Xbox and you'll find two slots on the underside edge. They line up with the pins on the stand itself and snap in very securely. Once on its side the black and white color scheme really stands out here and I think it looks really sharp in this orientation. Now putting up the console we can go ahead and get it set up for the first time. Now if you bought one of these on launch day you will notice that you'll have to run a fairly significant update here and that becomes immediately clear uh, when you see the splash screen which shows us the older hardware. But 
once it runs through the update, you'll get an updated splash screen for the newer hardware. So when it comes to performance, even though we have the same internal hardware, there is a slight gain here, about 7%. It's pretty much imperceptible, but this does enable HDR gaming, which improves the visual quality of games, but doesn't improve the resolution or overall performance. Now, although this console does support 4K, it does not support 4K gaming. That's arriving with the next generation console, but it does support 4K Blu-ray and streaming services. Of course, you do need to buy those Ultra HD Blu-ray discs in order to test this out, but the quality is really stunning, especially on my 4K OLED TV, and this is the best I've ever seen it. Now, the new Xbox does support high dynamic range for both gaming and video, but you will need a TV that actually supports HDR10, which unfortunately mine does not. Now if you don't know what your TV supports, the Xbox will actually tell you under the display settings. So when it comes to the software experience, both the Xbox One and One S were recently updated with some new features, but the experience is the same on both. The biggest new feature is Cortana. So with Cortana, you do need a microphone, and currently with the Xbox One S without Kinect, you'll have to use a headset in order to use Cortana. Now, ultimately, the Xbox One S definitely isn't an essential purchase for anybody who already has an Xbox One. Now, of course, if you have a 4K TV, I think this is definitely worth considering, especially since it gives you access to an Ultra HD Blu-ray player, which itself is usually around $200 to $300. And of course, if you're a fan of the Kinect sensor, you probably are gonna wanna skip this. Alrighty, guys, hope you enjoyed this look at the Xbox One S. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and I'll see you again in the next video.